You can see that turbulent motion there. There it is crossing the road up ahead of me. When I saw this, I didn't know what I was looking at. i like, what is that crossing the road in front of me? It looked like some sort of weird gray freight train. Um, this is spiraling into and feeding a mile and a half wide EF4 in this frame here. I knew better than to drive into it. This ghost train on the storm actually took out the back window of a storm chaser's uh, vehicle. And it's really important to, to watch out for this because I think a lot of times chasers and spotters are kind of fixated on the funnel cloud and the debris cloud. And if you're close to the tornado, you can get hit by this and never see it coming because it's low to the ground and it's difficult to spot. Um, here's the ghost train on a uh, tornado that was in Tupelo, Mississippi uh, last year. You can see it there on the left crossing the road. These cars are darting, darting out of the ray of that uh, funnel cloud, but they're about to get hit by that ghost train there on the left that could blow out their windows and bring these trees down. Here's the Girard, Illinois, EF3 from 2011. Uh, the ghost train is pretty visible there on the right as that band of gray mist feeding into that tornado. You can also see there's some debris flying in that jet of wind. Um, in terms of the damage survey, this area is often just considered to be part of the tornado, even though it extends out from the funnel cloud and uh, debris cloud there. So looking at our radar here, here's where it usually occurs. It's part of the rear flank downdraft. Um, Generally, but not always, these can come off in any direction, but generally they're in the area behind the tornado, typically south or west of the tornado, curling back towards that RFD. So let's look at some storm properties next, um, including whether our features are inflow or outflow based. If our storm is surface-based or elevated, 